everyone? Morning. I find it funny that people don't think that's a natural subject to fuse together, Greece and this and that. Um, so yeah, like Steve, welcome me on. Uh, we're going to look at digital marketing and, and the ancient Greeks. Noske teepsum, as Aristotle so pithily put, or know thyself in English. And no, that's not the title of my first hip hop album, but it's a way of thinking about truly understanding humanity and why we do certain things. The good news is I'm not going to give the whole speech in Latin, uh, but in ancient Greek. <laughs> so one of the reasons I'm obsessed with ancient Greeks is their way of thinking around what makes humanity work and why we do certain things. They kind of made persuasion into a fusion of art and science. And I would argue as a marketeer, we're constantly trying to persuade people to do things. I'm really interested in why people follow certain famous celebrities, why we buy certain products over other products, and why we're influenced by certain behaviours. I think the Greeks were first to really look at this and make it into an art. As well as having probably the best beard in the whole talk, <laughs> Socrates also uh, gave us a number of tenets that we, we take into effect today. Now, on top of borrowing Russell Crowe's haircut and a hipster barista beard, what, what Aristotle lacked in pupils, he made up in methodologies. <laughs> One of my key, my favourite things that he came up with is the kind of science of persuasion and, and why we do things. And, and at its heart, if you look at any uh, compelling argument, any good marketing campaign, anything that makes us change our behaviour, you'll find logos, pathos and ethos. Logos is the logical part of an element. In its purest form, it can be things like statistical analysis or data. Think things like Colgate, 80% of dentists recommend our toothpaste. Very difficult to argue with a stat, very difficult indeed. Pathos is the emotional side of an argument. Think crying kittens, sad looking kids, those kind of things. We're a couple of weeks away from the launch of the John Lewis advert, and they make us spend a load of money on people we don't really like once a year because of their pathos-led advertising. Very effective way. Now, logos and pathos mean absolutely nothing if it isn't underpinned by ethos, and ethos is the credibility or trust. As well as credibility or trust, we also need to align our way of thinking with whoever we've been shown. So if we're being told to do something by someone we don't kind of consider a peer or consider a thought leader, it means nothing. Which is why Cristiano Ronaldo earns 350k for pretty much every sponsored Instagram post he does. I'm not necessarily saying he's a thought leader, but he does make people do things. We all recognise this guy? No? You? Minotaur. Um, now, Minotaur, kind of, we're all aware of either a Minotaur or a Labyrinth, um, being very well, uh, kind of, repeated throughout history, it's a story people are very passionate about. But what I would argue is that it was also the first bit of propaganda. At the time, Athens and Crete were at war. I can't remember what they'd fallen out about that time. Uh, one of the many fallings out they had, probably a woman or wine or something, a combination of the two. So to make peace with Crete, Athens would ship off a boy and a girl and give them to a Minotaur. I'm not sure you'd be able to do that today. Maybe Theresa May want to ignore that for Brexit. <laughs> We'd ship off this boy and a girl, they'd be slaughtered by the Minotaur, and then everyone was at peace. Theseus was a local hard nut at the time, thought, I've had enough of this, I need more wine, more fame, and more women, I'm going to sail off, kill the Minotaur, and bring his head back. People loved it. Obviously this is a story, it probably didn't happen, there probably wasn't a man with a bull head, but we still repeat it today. And Seth Godin, one of our modern forward thinkers, said people don't buy goods and services, they buy stories and magic. Has anything really changed over that time? This is probably the worst beard of the talk, but one of my favourite Greeks. <laughs> well, he lacked in beard, he made up by always wearing two faces. <laughs> Which is completely not true, but it's a great picture. So this is Pericles. Pericles was a very important Athenian. He built most of the Acropolis, or oversaw it, including the Parthenon, as well as many other things. He was also one of the first people to be accredited with democracy, or putting democracy into succinct, easy-to-digest points. One of the quotes attributed to him 
Democracy allows men to advance because of merit instead of wealth or inherited class. Very easy to say when your dad's one of the richest people in the world. <laughs> and very famous as well. But the basic point you know, has, been, has been one of the things that's been passed on from the ancient Greeks till today. We think ancient Greece, we think mythology, we think nakedness, we think democracy. And he brought us democracy. <laughs> If Pericles hung out online, I would suggest that he probably would be on uh, my favourite social media channel, which is Reddit. Now, Reddit, for those people that don't know, call themselves the front page of the internet, and one of the things that they do is uh, give everything an, an equal playing field. So, the stuff that you'll see at the, the top there has been deemed credible or interesting by one of the peers, one of the people that are already on, the, on that network. So, the stuff at the top, someone's seen, it's either had some pathos, some ethos, or some logos, and they thought, okay, we're going to vote that up. I think that's probably where the ancient Greeks would have hung out. Can't talk about ancient Greece and not reference Olympians. Now, what we do know, obviously, is the Olympians came together every four years. They celebrated the sports that they were best at, and it was all in honour of Zeus, the king of gods. What perhaps you don't know as much about the, these guys is that they were, I would argue, some of the first influencers. They made us do things. Everyone aspires to be good at their sport. Everyone aspires to be better at something that they take passionately. But they would also endorse products. And this is something we don't necessarily know as much about. It would not have been uncommon for them to have paraded around with certain logos, talking about olive oil brands, words, whatever it was. They were very key at promoting certain brands that had made them get there. I would also argue it's much easier to be influential if you're naked, but that's why I'm banned from most of Brighton. <laughs> One of my favourite anecdotes, and forgive me, it's Rome rather than Greece, but Steve said I was allowed to put it in. Um, the film Gladiator, everyone knows Gladiator? Yeah. Greatest film I've made yet? <laughs> Be not. Um, so within that, if you look at the original script, there was a scene where Maximus turns to the middle of the Colosseum and endorsed the brand of olive oil. I promise you, that's not a joke. And Ridley Scott said, we've got to cut that because no one will believe us. Kind of made me think, you know, clearly at the time, we would consider these the, the initial kind of uh, thought leaders or uh, promoters or um, uh, influencers that would make us do certain things. Perhaps after he'd won about, Pericles might have gone onto Facebook and promoted his brand of the world and made him a better better. That's supposition, I'm not sure he did that. But have things really changed? Olivia made some brilliant points, one of which about Instagram. Now on Instagram, we take photos, we add filters, we make our lives look better than they probably are, and we're told by celebrities that our lives are going to be even better if we buy the products they're endorsing that week. Julianne Hoff, loads of followers, very successful online, told people boxed water is better, hundreds of thousands of people go out and buy it. Things haven't really changed. We look up to people, we're influenced by them. If our ethics align with their ethics, we're very likely to do something they've told us to do. Homer, worst haircut, best beard. <laughs> Homer, obviously the greatest player of all time, it's not up for debate. It's like, whoop, amazing. <laughs> Homer wrote the two best poems in existence, the Iliad and the Odyssey, still recited today, 2,750 odd years later, a pretty phenomenal achievement. My talk shown in 2,000 years, I'll definitely consider that my uh, greatest achievement. What Homer gave us was the, uh, the Iliad. So from left to right, maybe a whoop after this, we've got Agamemnon, Achilles, Nestor, Odysseus, Diomedes, Paris and Menelaus. <laughs> I'm going to focus on the guy fourth from the left which is Odysseus, my favourite character from anything. Read into my personality what you will. Odysseus was all about convincing people to do things, getting into trouble, and then talking his way out of it. If Odysseus turns up on the scene, you know something's going to happen. He's an impactful character. Very, very, very rarely gets involved in a fight. He has Achilles next to him, or two to the left of him to do the fighting, but he'll talk people into it. In fact, he convinced Achilles to fight in this fight, and he died, so we'll take from that all. But, um, the main point I'm making with this, one of the key things that uh, Homer did, he obviously didn't have pen and paper, telex talks, YouTube, Reddit. What he had to rely on were people reciting his stories and finding his stories interesting enough to share them, repeat them, and pass them on to the next generation. 
number of ways he did this, one of which was he would borrow chunks of poems from previous <coughs> times, so chunks of poems that we perhaps would have known, that we'd already been told by our mother or father, and he'd also introduce each of the key characters with an epithet. So every time Odysseus is, is introduced to a scene, it's not just Odysseus, it's the fleet-thinking Odysseus, the witty Odysseus, the intelligent Odysseus. So we might not know an Odysseus, we probably can't relate to having a god fight alongside us in a battle, probably hasn't happened to much of us, I'd better say. <laughs> but what we, what we can relate to is someone we know that is witty, that can talk himself out of situations. And so we can instantly relate to this story, and that's why, one of the many reasons why this story has worked so well. Well, so Paris, the guy from second from right, he's the one that supposedly stole Helen. Now, obviously, uh, Smurf hats were a lot more popular back then. <laughs> <laughs> we look at that, and we look at the, the, the people that we try to uh, emulate. And obviously, now one of the things that um, Homer did was make us feel like we have a connection with Odysseus, feel like we know Achilles. We kind of know, okay, Achilles is hot-headed. He's going to do something messed up. As marketeers, we try to create strap lines, thoughts, products. People see our logo and they think, I need that. Often they don't need that, but we try and make them think they do need that. So not much has changed really from what then. Obviously Hermes, this is Hermes, sorry, not obviously at all. This is Hermes. Um, I've got messages and a the brand to align themselves with that. <laughs> all about speed of delivery. He didn't actually have that tattoo, but maybe you should do that as a PR stunt. Hermes, if you're watching that, you should uh, do that as a PR stunt. Right. So building on from Homer, another really popular myth that I want to look at is Narcissus. Probably most of us have heard something about Narcissus. Narcissus was a character, he fell in love with himself, thought he was the most beautiful thing in the world, um, sure he's out whether he was or not, and Echo, who was a wood nymph, fell in love with him. Happened to all of us, right? Can't bat away the amount of wood nymphs that fall in love with him. <laughs> now Echo She'd previously been punished for something else. Gods were very vengeful and punished, liked punishing people. She'd been punished for something else. She was no longer allowed to complete her sentences. So she could only say the first half of something. So she couldn't tell Narcissus that she loved him. He found her really annoying. It was way over the top rude to her. And so as a punishment, Nemesis made him fall in love with his own reflection. Echo, distraught, prayed for forgiveness and was turned into just the sound of the voice, which is why we say Echo, Echo, Echo now. Little tip that we need to take away. But equally, Nemes uh, uh, Nemesis pus punishing Narcissus in that way, he could never quite get his reflection. No matter how many ponds he tried to pull it out of, he was always left frustrated. The parallel I'd like to look at here, building on from Olivia's point, is this obsession with the selfie that we have. You know, this, this online version that we're trying to create of ourselves. I mentioned about you know, having a bad day, but you look on the social media, they've had a fantastic day. I'd ask all of us to think, you know, are we more in love with the online version of ourselves we're trying to create, or our actuality? Do we spend as much time on our own thoughts, well-being, and happiness as we do making sure our plate of food looks brilliant for Instagram? At the moment, I think we've got the balance the wrong way around. There's one to think about. This guy, magnificent beard, not enough curls to make it the best beard on the deck, but magnificent. So, on top of the mythology and the, uh, the forward thinking around that, the democracy, the storytelling, another key part of ancient Greece was philosophy. Aristotle believed that you could categorise anything with ten key questions. So those ten sections could man, mineral, beast, whatever it is, you'd be able to categorise it. As a species, we were obsessed with putting things into boxes. We, it's a very confusing world, we're constantly presented with loads of information, and we try and put things in boxes. So at its heart, Plato then built on this and said, a human, man, is a featherless biped. His friend, Diogenes, plucked a chicken, held it aloft, behold, a man. The first algorithm being debunked and flawed. Now our main algorithm that we use on a daily basis is the lovely search engine Google, but every so often they make a mistake. If you go home and Google the King of the United States, you'll be reminded of this handsome man that's no longer with us. Well, he's with us, he's alive, he didn't just die, sorry. He's with us, but he's no longer in power. Obviously a mistake, something that was on Google for a while, but I guess it could be a lot worse. <laughs> Best laugh of the day, brilliant. Um, 
We're now moving into a time where we're becoming even more obsessed with the means of delivery of, me of uh, messages rather than the messages themselves. We're moving into a virtual reality time, an alternative reality. But I would argue there has never been a time that we're more reliant on logos, pathos, and ethos. Without statistical evidence, we think, I don't trust you. You could have made this up. I need some, something backed up. I need a star that makes me read to the bottom to say, as quoted in the consultancy or whatever. Without an emotional hook, we think, well, I don't care about that statistic. I need to care about it. And without credibility, the other two mean absolutely nothing. Final beard of the day, Plato. <laughs> Just, just a chance to show off I could put things on top of things. This is, this is Plato, what I would say, building on Olivia's point, we should all be more Plato on social media. We shouldn't be posting that we've had a fantastic day if we haven't had a fantastic day. We shouldn't be spending 25 minutes until our food goes cold, Hannah, and instead of eating it, taking a photo of it. We should enjoy it. If we're going to post stuff online, we should be trying to think about an emotional connection. We should be trying to provide some value. We shouldn't be gloating, we should be promoting conversation and talking about things with people. Ultimately, providing credibility, providing an ethical stance, and providing that emotional work. To take nothing else off, this quote from Plutarch, philosopher, non facet, barber, a beard doesn't make you a philosopher. <laughs>